Right, so let's get this started. Um, so I'm just going to start off with showing a bit about the just the landscape actor and its components in Unreal. So the landscape actor is pretty much just like any other actor. It is. Let me just clear this. Create a new. So it's it's an actor that lives in the scene, and it has any number of components, just the same as like a static mesh actor does. So I'm going to just um, play with some of these settings, and and then we'll kind of dive more into them. So uh, the number of components. Here we go. So we can set the number of components to one. So this is one component, and we can see that it's got this yellow edge. If I bring up the um, the landscape technical guide from the, the documentation, the official documentation, we can see that the yellow edge, this is the landscape actor edge. So the whole of the landscape is surrounded by this yellow edge. Then it says that the light green, uh, this is a component edge. So if I up the number of components to two by two, there we go. You see this light green here, that is the boundary between components. And then within that, we've got the medium green, which is a section edge. Uh, but here we don't actually see the medium green because what we've done is we've set each component to have one section. So there's kind of multiple levels of things going on here. We've got the actor itself, we've got the, um, the, the components, which are these kind of big square things. And then within each component, they can be broke up into a number of sections. And there's only two, kind of two options here. We've got the one by one section or the two by two. So if I come down here, we can see um, that there's there's all these kind of arrangements of numbers of components and sections, and then even down to the number of quads per section. Uh, so the, yeah, you can only choose between one by one sections or two by two sections. So if I change that now, the number of sections to two by two, then we can see that it's gotten bigger. And that's because we've still got four components, but now each component has got two by two sections. And then we can kind of go in and change the number of quads. So if we say seven by seven, then that's gonna be having just seven quads within each section. So really confusing and really horrible, but if we start from the bottom up, we can kind of see what's going on here. So with one component with one section, with seven quads, the minimum possible. Uh, there we go. So this is this is looking at one landscape actor, one component with one by one section and seven quads. Now the reason it's got seven quads is because there's actually eight vertices. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, so this is so that each um, kind of section can have its own texture. Now, in terms of textures, where does it say that? There's something about um, how the textures get mapped. Each component's height data is stored in a single texture. So I'm just going to copy that, and I'm going to put that into some notes here. So I can get some kind of bullet points. So each component's height data is stored in a single texture. So here we have one component. The fact that it has one section doesn't really matter, but let's say we have two by two section. And now you notice that we had to bump up the, uh, the, the overall resolution gets bumped up. So we've still got one section uh, with seven by seven quads, but now it's made up of two sections. So we can have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 um, vertices now. So 15 by 15. And that is um, because this is um, these sections are sharing edges, sharing vertices, sorry. So go back down to one by one. And it's obviously just one section and two by two sections. This component's going to have one texture but these um, it's the resolution is changing and we'll see why that changes uh, when we bump up the number of components so bump up the number of components and we see now we have um, this green line here and this is where the uh, the textures get shared so th so this component here 
um, this is one component because we've got two by two with two by two sections this is going to have its own texture and this is going to have its own texture on the graphics card now when we import our actual height map that's going to get applied across the whole thing and those two vertices there's actually one vertice for this component um, or one vertex sorry for this component but they sh because there's two vertices in the same place they're going to sample that same pixel so that's going to give us some really weird resolutions um, but I'll come back to I'll come back to this when we get into world, world machine and how we export everything so that's kind of just like a little kind of overview of the way that this is arranged so we can have basically multiple ways of organizing the resolution um, but all you need to really, need to really know is that you have components, sections, and quads. And it's kind of this kind of hierarchy which allows Unreal to kind of dynamically change its performance. Uh, so this recommended landscape sizes thing, let's bump this up. This is really important for um, how we're going to kind of arrange our, our landscapes. And it kind of gives you like these are the ones that these are the resolutions that give you the best performance for you know for the cost so you know the fact that you have a lot of verses is going to be tough to render but this is the best way of organizing them so that it's going to render the fastest possible for that particular resolution now let's talk about a bit about height maps so we can import from a file and let me just clear this out because that's a test i had going on earlier on um, we can import from a file and that's going to be a 16-bit PNG or a 16-bit raw file. So let's create one of these things. Let's go into Photoshop and let me just expand this and I'll create a new file. And let's create a color mode, a grayscale 16-bit texture. And I'm going to make it 2K. There we go. And the first thing I'll do is I'm going to fill it with 50% grey. Now, one thing that we can do is over in our info tab, we can um, click on this little dropper icon, and you can actually set the mode to be grayscale and 16-bit, and it's going to tell you the range of values. So if we just did an 8-bit um, texture, that's only going to give us values between 0 and 255. So the only height values you can have are going to be 0 to 255, which means if you've got a really high height map, you're going to see stepping. So that's why 16-bit is used, because it allows us to have um, thousands of discrete values, which is going to give us a, lot, a smoother transition as we go higher. Um, but this, this info is just showing us that these values. So if I hover my, my cursor over the map, it's going to tell you that this value is 16,384. Now, that's something that's kind of unique to Photoshop. I'm kind of do a bit of a tangent here, but 16-bit um, values typically have a range um, of 64,000. So if I just Google 64-bit range, then the value is going to be zero to 200. No, sorry, zero to, to 6,500, 65,535. Or if you make it signed, you can go minus 32 to plus 32,000. Now, uh, Photoshop works a bit different. This isn't too, something you really have to worry about, but it works a bit different in that um, it goes from 0 to 32,768, mainly so that you can have a, a mid value that's the whole integer. Now, it's a bit of a, yeah, a bit of a kind of a small technical issue, but it shouldn't really change anything when, uh, shouldn't really make much difference. It's so that we can divide that value in half and have a complete middle value because if we have this range which typically is 16 bit range that's the full kind of you know computer science way of thinking about it if we have our calculator and we type that in and then divide by 2 you're going to get like a 0.5 value which isn't a whole integer and that's kind of what we're doing is we're trying to work in integers here so that each each integer integer is going to be a, an increase in stepping uh, for our height map. But that's why uh, Photoshop 
uh, does it like this. It kind of, I think it reserves, it basically does that and then it reserves the final value for um, the final bit in that Current whole range. Current time is 12.55 p.m. So yeah, don't worry about, about it too much because this is just to illustrate an example before we get into World Machine. So I'm gonna paint like fully black here and then I'm gonna flip my color and I'm gonna paint fully white. So here we go. So if you hover over this thing, it's gonna say that the value is zero and over here is the full value 32,768 and in the middle it's that 16,000 value which is the, um, Photoshop's middle value. So let's just export this as a PNG and here's what I got earlier but I'll just overwrite it. So let's uh, overwrite this and it's currently being used by another program, probably Unreal. So let's save it as this. I'm just going to call it version 2. Uh, there we go. Now in Unreal, let's try and import that into our new high map. So I've just gone to landscape, uh, create new import from file. So let's try that one. And it gives us this um, preview mesh before it's even created. So this hasn't actually created it yet, hasn't imported it because it allows us to change some of these um, values here before we do that. So we could change the number of components. And let's look what happens when we do that. So let me just zoom right out because it's a quite a big, um, quite a big uh, file, quite a big landscape. So here's our preview. And let's see what happens when we change some of these. So you can kind of see it's keeping the, the landscape um, fixed in space. And then when we do the number of components, it's, it's clipping that. So it's basically kind of spatially spreading out that height map. And it's gonna give us our output resolution. This isn't something you really, really change. You can change it and it's gonna change the number of components. You can say, I want my output resolution to be this and then this. And if you specify higher resolution for your map, then it's gonna pad it out and put in like a value of zero basically. But uh, if we do fit to data, what it's going to try and do is give each vertex one pixel. And then if there's extra or less, then it's going to um, pad it out. And you can see here, the overall resolution is going to be 2143, which is slightly more than at 2048. <clears throat> and that's why we kind of, when we come back to our landscape guide, where's our technical guide? That's why we have these strange resolutions, because it's giving us... Um, a texture with those shared edges. So let's go to create new and if we put in some of these values we can see let's just put one section with four components. Let's try that. Let's try one section four components and sorry two by two components so a total of four there we go and that's going to give us an overall resolution of 127 by 27 by 127 so the number of vertices along here is going to be 127 which means that our <coughs> overall map resolution to map one pixel to one vertex we need to output this resolution now when we go back to here we can put these in. So let's say uh, one section per component and we have 64 components, so 8 by 8 components. Let's put that in. There we go. So now that's going to give us a resolution of 505. Now luckily the free version of World Machine allows you to export that uh, resolution. So you'd be able to get this level of detail from the free version of World Machine. <coughs> But let's go into World Machine now. So now we've done a bit about, um, actually, I've completely forgotten about my height map. That's something else I wanted to show you. Let's uh, fit data so that we get this full thing. Now, this isn't the full resolution yet, so we're gonna import this and we're gonna see what kind of height values we're gonna get. So here we go. We've got our height map actor in our scene now. Now let's go out of the, actor, the um, landscape mode so we, we can select this thing now. And don't worry about these grid lines. That's just because we haven't built the light, the lighting. So we've got our landscape actor, and you can see all of these components 
these are all the components. So if I select them, you can you can see them in the, in the uh, in the viewport. So there should be 64 of them because it's eight by eight. We don't really need to look at all of these components though. What I want to do is look at the height. Current time is one o'clock p.m. So if I create an empty actor, and I'm just going to drag it into my scene. Now what I can do is I can hit the end key and it's going to ping down and snap to the ground. And you can see over in our transform, this empty actor now, which we're using as our like, measurement for our height, it's at pretty much it's at 100 um, centimeters. And that's because they're getting some strange rounding due to the 16-bit the values. If I do it down here, you can see we've got minus 255 at 100. So that's, that's minus 255 meters. And then over here, where am I? Oh, I've lost my. I want to get my actor. I've completely lost my way. Let's bring it back over here. And let's stick it on top of this guy. stick him over here and hit the end key actually he's not even above it there we go hit the end key and we're going to get a maximum value of 256.97 so that's almost 257 meters now that means that what we're getting pretty much is minus 255 2 plus 257. So that's giving us a range um, between, yeah, it's a bit of a strange range, but you can kind of see that it's, it's a difference of 512. So what we're seeing here is the landscape height, the minimum and maximum height that we're getting from a black value and a white value is gonna be 512. Now the reason we're getting what you'd expect is to have minus 256 and then plus 256 and that is actually what we're getting. The reason we're seeing these offsetted values is because um, the, the landscape actor for some reason is transferred up by 100 centimeters. So it's transferred up one meter by default. So if we get an actor and put it on the flat area, which is meant to be where zero is, do that, and you can see it's yeah like 100 meters up. So I'm gonna stick this to zero on the landscape actor. You hardly saw anything there because it's so big, but it went down one meter. And now when we measure our height, we're getting pretty much zero centimeters. And the reason for this is due to those 16-bit values and that, that integer division is just kind of slightly off. But it shouldn't really matter. Also, the, reason, the, the way that this snaps down is I think it uses a physics trace. So there's gonna be some inaccuracy there. But what we've seen is that we've got this range, this 512 range. Uh, the other thing I wanna point out is on the landscape actor, is it scaled up 100, 100, 100. Now that's kind of, um, at first seems a bit weird. Um, so let's see what happens when we put this down to 111. Um, well, first it's hard to see, so let's hide the sky sphere. Where's our landscape? There we go. So this is our landscape. It's tiny now. It's actually just one centimeter wide. Um, actually, that's, that's not quite true. Each vertice is one unit apart. So you can kind of see on the grid here, and it's quite hard to even move my mouse because it's um, it's kind of traveling around so fast. So each vertice here, if we go to wireframe, each vertice here is going to be one unit long. Now, can I set my grid snapping value to that? Oh, it's hard to visualize, but basically, each vertice is, is one unit apart, 
so that's one centimeter. So that's why it's scaled up to 100, so that each vertex becomes it becomes. Oh, I've got tessellation turned on. That's strange. Um, it becomes one one meter apart. So that kind of makes sense when we think about our textures, uh, and they can be basically each pixel is going to represent a one meter um, height value from the next one. That's strange that it's got tessellation on. What material? Have I probably need to create a new material uh, that doesn't have tessellation. Maybe the default has it on already. So let's create a new uh, material. I'm going to call this mat underscore landscape. Let's apply that there. There we go. So we've got this new material. And let's make it grey so we can see this thing. Current so time is 1.06 p.m. Yeah, oh, we still do. Maybe that's a uh, maybe that's a bug in 4.13. Can I turn it off? Um, no, it's, it's not tessellation. It's just the way the, the landscape component works, I think. It does look like tessellation to me. That's really weird. Maybe that's the new features in 4.13. Maybe it's always done that, man. I just haven't noticed. Okay, so that's probably just the LOD system in the, in the landscape. So you can probably ignore me. Um, so let's uh, go over to World Machine. Because now we kind of know how to map our meters to pixels. And then we'll kind of show you how you can map more resolution to your, to your, to your landscape. Because you might want two pixels per meter to give you high resolution. So let's go over to World Machine. So here we go. This is what you get when you open up World Machine. You just get a basic generator, um, some some kind of erosion thing, and then the output. <coughs> Have a bit of water. So let's um, go to our project world parameters. So this is, this is where we're going to set our resolution, basically. Uh, by default, it gives you kind of power of 2 plus 1 as like the default resolution, but we're going to be overriding this to match our height map so that we get the maximum kind of you know bang for our buck for the resolution. You can set the um, range of your map. Now, it says 8 kilometers, uh, and really, this is kind of just like... Um, like a, a mental physical kind of no sorry like a mental um, measurement that we're setting for our maximum ranges, and it's kind of how we tell um, World Machine what its own range is. So you can set this to 4K by 4K, which is what I'm going to be doing here, 4K by 4K, uh, and that's going to kind of that's going to change a lot of these kind of input um, ranges and what you see in the viewport. But really, you, you're working with noise values, so these don't really mean too much. I can set that to four, or four. And this is going to be an, that off, that's an offset that top value. That's an offset into where these noises get picked up. And you can even see on the uh, the layout view, you get to see where that offset is. Is so if I change that now in the in the parameters, if I change this to zero zero, that white square is going to jump somewhere else. Do that. That's what it should do. Lower left coordinate, there we go. So if we just change that to zero and that to zero, that should change where this is. Okay, there we go. So that jumped up there. Um, and I think this was minus four. So this just sets some basic offsets into these noise generation um, kind of nodes. But the real thing we're interested in is our build resolution and under this general setup tab, our terrain altitude. 
So this is going to be key because you can see as I drag that, this is what's setting our um, white value in our 16 bit map. So this is how we're going to be able to get um, basically maximize the resolution from World Machine over into Unreal and maximize that whole 16 bit range so that we're not wasting space. So what, what could happen is you might have quite a higher um, altitude. So let's say your maximum is, I don't know, 2048 meters. Oops, let's just write that down. So, okay, 2880. Um, now, if we go back to our, our view here, when you're setting your, your initial kind of noise, what you'll see here is, you can see now if you set it to, to a really high value, then you're going to clamp at this maximum range. And that's what our maximum elevation is we set. We set that to 2,880 meters, uh, which is good. Like if, you, if that's what you wanted, fine. You import that into Unreal. You can set your, you can scale your Z value, and that's going to set that to be the maximum value in Unreal, and you'll get a flat bit. Now the problem occurs when you have this at, at um, uh, a low, so that's that elevation center. So if we've got low values here, you can see where it's white. Um, then, here we go. So you can see if we had, if we exported this out, out of World Machine, we're wasting that whole 16 bit range, which we can't even see. What you want is for your map to be. Uh, kind of at this top range and then in your world machine parameters you want to bring down that vertical scale to be what your maximum is and that's going to ensure that you get this full range because um, otherwise you'll get stepping and you'll see it in, world, in Unreal so let's just get some I'm, I'm not going to kind of go too much into world machine but I'm going to get some basic values here so I've set a 4K range, so I want to change my input to kind of go over, so it looks like it's going over 4K. Again, this is just a Perlin noise, so it's not really anything physical, but they've kind of given this kind of intuition as to how big this, this thing is. So we've set in a range of 4K, and let's say that this mountain range is 4K wide. So let's um, now play with that elevation. So this elevation center, that's going to default to some median value. And then, so if I set my steepness to zero, then zero is going to be no displacement. And then this is going to be maximum displacement. So let's uh, reset that. And now we can kind of, we're scaling around zero. So let's say I want there to be a little bit of deepness to this. So this is going to be the bottom bit in Unreal. And then that. So I don't want to clamp everything because then I'm going to get flat bits in Unreal. But this is what I want to be our range. So here we're, we're maximizing our range. So white is going to be the full value in the map. Um, let's add some erosion. Let's go to natural. This is our erosion. Um, I always do that. Whoops. And let's drag this into our into our chain. There we go. And let's up the erosion amount. So I'm going to go to there we go. We're going to get some cool features. Rock hardness. Bring back some detail. Carry amount. Going to get some flowing. Bring down the filter strength a bit. There we go. That looks good to me. So this is going to be our um, our height map. So in our height output, we have to tell it what format we want. We're going to go to high resolution. Uh, we could do PNG, which is the same as what we've had before, or Unreal also accepts this raw 16. Uh, so we need to set our file name. So we'll do set, and I'm going to export this to. Um, Game Assets folder. Let's go to 
world machine terrains. So I'm going to just do um, call it generic landscape version one. Um, so here we're just setting the the output. We're not actually doing anything yet. So we need to go to our build, and we, this is where we're going to set this custom resolution. So let's go to our thing, and we set the range to be four kilometers. So the nearest thing that I've found to be that is going to be this. So let's um, first of all just stick this resolution into our work machine. Four zero three three. So I'm going to do custom four zero three three. Hit enter, and let's just make sure that that took. So there we go. So the plus one that is kind of does it in place. So you could turn it off and type zero three three, and that'll do the same thing. As long as you enter that value, it should be fine. So that's going to be the resolution that we build up. So let's. Um, Let's do it. Let's write the output to disk. It's going to prompt you to build everything. So what you could have done is just built it um, here anyway. So you could have just um, gone up here and just say build, and it's going to go through and and build the whole thing, bake it in. You can even and what what it does then is it's going to show you that in the viewport that res that result. Give it a while because it's doing erosion at 4K, which could take a while. Building, building. <clears throat> I'm just gonna, should I cancel it? Yeah, I'll cancel it, I'll do a 2K one, a bit faster. Okay, so let's go back to our landscape technical guide. Let's do a 2K by 2K. So well, I'm gonna change my actual world. So let's, um, world parameters. I like everything to be matched up. So that we're kind of trying to stay um, in the physical realms. So let's go to 2017. So this is going to be our resolution. This is going to be a lot quicker to build. And just make sure that that took. Yep, that's all good. And our uh, maximum ele elevation. There we go. So let's set that back to what it was there. So we could go and change our range, but that looks like it could be a cool two kilometer mountain. Let's do that. So we'll build that. That should take a lot quicker. There we go. Speeding through. <clears throat> 